All right. Hey, welcome back to the Go for CEO community. This is John the Bomb. Building others means business. And look, I get super excited for these days, these opportunities to really meet some of the founders, entrepreneurs, CEOs of companies. This gentleman had an incredible 20 year career that has just been really interesting in the branding awareness space, right? And in, in the innovative, creative area. So I'm going to read his introduction. This is going to be the first time I do this point blank right out. But, you know, today's guest, Jim, uh, should I ask Pritchard Zink? Pritchard Zinsky, there you go. Pritchard Zinsky uh, is the CEO of Soulite, a brand design agency with 30 years plus of experience in building emotive brands that move. Jim's work spans iconic brands and channels driven by creative, creativity, and deep understanding of human needs. He's fostered breakthrough innovation through collaboration and honesty. Jim draws inspiration from human truths and empathetic approach, offering compelling creative thinking. And he's worked global giants, right? Companies like Kraft Heinz, Coca-Cola, and Pfizer, earning recognition from prestigious awards. So there, that, that's pretty cool intro, man. So welcome to the GoForCO channel. It's one of the first intros that we've been able to kind of dive deep like that. So thank you for being on. Thanks, John. Nice to, nice to be, nice to have you. Nice to, thanks for having me on the show. No, no worries. No worries. Hey, excited to have you. So I know we were having some offline chat and uh, really, you know, that's kind of where some of the, the great connection happens, right? Uh, having CEOs, founders like yourself that, you know, go through the ranks of a company, um, you know, buy out, you're sharing a little bit about buying out partners and old founders and then creating an opportunity where a PE company came in. So take us through kind of a snapshot of the last 20 years. I know it's probably <laughs> a lot of stuff in it, but just a quick snapshot and we'll start to develop the conversation from there. Yeah. So I'll start may maybe a little bit earlier than 20 years, like how I got into the industry okay. and what I was looking for coming out, um, coming out of school or college um, back in the the mid nineties. And, uh, I worked for a couple of agencies, um, as a graphic designer. And, uh, I also have a hist really inter a lot of interest in human science. So working those agencies focused on branding and brand design, and it's not something that typically you are introduced to, especially at that time while you were while in it, in education. And, um, I had a, experience working at a smaller design agency in Chicago, um, and then a larger um, agency with multiple offices around the country. And um, what I felt, you know, w while working at those places was a there was a little bit of a transaction going on and um, less collaboration. And I missed the kind of camaraderie of working with someone in a studio and being able to um, bounce ideas off of each other and really think about how having those conversations about what's next, what do we, what can we do next instead of just being in like, j instead of just being an output, you know, like I, like where's the input, where's the output and having some sort of a relationship um, internal. Like, so motivationally, my motivation was like, how do you create that studio experience that I had such a great, you know, uh, ability and um, privilege to have in school in the professional world, because I think we can do much better work. And, um, and, and also it's, well, it'll be more of a joyful place to work. So I joined a, I was working with a woman and a gentleman, um, at an agency who left to start a, a smaller agency with kind of this, the mindset of working on more mid-size business, uh, you know, not your fortune, not that, not the fortune 100 companies that we work with today, but, um, the just smaller businesses and startups and, um, I was their first hire um, as a designer and, you know, uh, worked really well, just kind of the the, the business was growing um, in a more of an, I say, in an organic way, like there didn't, we didn't have to, we had a lot of connections from previous jobs that were marketers have moved around or people that have gone off to start um, new businesses. And I, Ann Warner, um, who then eventually went on to buy out her partner that started the business, um, continued on owning the business, um, and then cr made a few of uh, my colleagues and I a partner in the in the agency. And um, but she really was uh, a, a great muse for uh, 
allowing us to like own it, you know, like uh, allowing us, even though I had no equity in the business, making it feel like it was my business, you know, like and, and understanding how to, how to move forward. So learn just like learning a lot and like yet you learn you try some things some things don't work so you 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 pick it up and you try something different and uh um she decided to retire and I still loved um where we were going and I thought we were at a point where you know we could take this up so talking to two of my colleagues that were partners the three of us decided to buy her out um back in I believe it was 24 may have been prior to 20 it was maybe 2008 or 2009 I'm sorry the dates are the dates are all blurred now after being somewhere for almost 27 years sure. but um so taking the company from her and then repositioning us to go after you know larger larger business and um scaling the company from I think we were about a little less than 20 people at the time to you know we're a we're a little bit over you know we fluctuate between 65 and 70 people today so um growing that business over over those years um and 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 owning the business independently um in um we eventually decided to bring on and and talk to private equity um thinking about like what can we sell a portion of this business to like help us grow then you know, exponentially more for some sort of legacy for all the rest of the, these great people that have, um, our retention is amazing. I mean, there's people that have been working with, uh, with us for, from 10, for 10 plus years, you know, um, that, so there's something to the, the culture that keeps people wanting to continue to move on. And there's something to the quality of work that we're producing and the type of work that we're, we're producing that's keeping people together. So, we've been about, it's about six years now that we've been with the PE company. And um, again, a lot of uh, growth and connection and really understanding of how to build the business to scale um, at another, in, at yet another level. So again, I, I feel like my career has been constantly um, being open to learn and not settle. Uh, but I I think that might just come from my personality and really looking to hire people and work with people that have the same mentality, you know, like they're not, they're not, they, they're not, they're not okay. Just being comfortable. Like they're always itching for what's, you know, what's next, what's new, what can we change? How do we, how do we evolve? And evolution, evolution is the name of the game for relevancy. So um, that brings me to where we are today, where the two partners that I um, acquired the business with, um, and that and and they they still have um, equity in the business, but I'm the only operating partner in the company right now, um, working with the PE company and then the rest of the executive staff that we have in place. So, work with a great group of people um, in this. In um, I, we we call ourselves the we call ourselves the executive team, um, not a C-suite, but then a group of individuals that manage kind of the different disciplines of the team that. Um, Again, I say as a very holistic team that has to work together that you you, you can't subdivide into different categories. Otherwise, we start to become different agencies working with under under like brands, branded uh, agencies working under a master branded agent agency. And um, so that's where we're at today. And um, again, it's we've been continuing to grow year after year um, since. I mean, the only the only time I think that we have, and I think everyone in the world had issues was um, during the recession back in uh, 20, 2009, 2010. So, um, but yeah, uh, other than that, um, we've been a, you know, a very, very healthy company. You know, and you brought up three topics there. I think that just kind of crystallized, right? Uh, one, the founder, the original founder treated you like owners, right? And you took on that role. Uh, so we affectionately were calling it uh, offline as an entrepreneur. Uh, and we love interviewing entrepreneurs. The Gopher CEO community really loves that because you get to hear guys like you that run through the, the, the gamut of the company and become a CEO of a company, which is pretty awesome. And, and then you, you talked about really at that point of her, you know, kind of walking away, you had taken two or three of your other leaders and, you know, colleagues 
and became owners of the business. And now you've even gone to the next level, which when private equity comes in, it could be scary. Um, you know, mm -hmm. these companies do have a stake in kind of, uh, you know, not manipulating, but just putting their, their two cents, right. Uh, pretty strong and, and being at the board, uh, and, and looking at things. So it's, it's an evolution that you've gone through and really, really amazing stuff. So, uh, kudos to you and, and all the things that you've been able to do and, and all the learning too, right. You, you said a little bit earlier too, that, you know, you're constantly growing. So I know in the GoFCO community, we love hearing from CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, intrapreneurs, because the enemy of greatness is comfort, right? So, yes. uh, you know, so staying comfortable can, can be a bad thing, right? Uh, but so awesome stuff. So look, SoulSight, let's get into SoulSight. I mean, well, mm -hmm. you know, you have an incredible branding, really cool, um, you know, approach. I saw the website and, and obviously, you know, a 20 plus year run, you know, you really develop different ways of kind of being in the marketplace. Uh, I also share with you, my wife's kind of in that space as well, more on the legal side. But um, when you go to compete in that type of market, what are some of the things that now you can share with the Go for Show community that have really made it relevant when there's the, the sense of competition against other brand agencies that maybe are pitching their value add? Yeah, great, um, great question. I think it's pretty relevant too because in the past six months we've really been working on our uh, repositioning um, in the marketplace and doing an analysis to make sure that we truly are differentiating and providing something different um, by working with a consultant and then working with a team to understand like really what at our core what really makes us different and a lot of it actually comes back to human truth. So. You know, uh, we use a positioning statement that says we build emotive brands, and that means moving people, moving product, and moving culture. Uh, there's an intersection that happens between like human truth, so that you know the things that we want, the things that we need, um, and um, our subconscious that and our emotions that help us um, that are really making the decisions for us that we don't even really realize. So as we continue to move forward um that empathy piece that we you, you, you spoke about earlier got brought back into like how do we really think about our business and empathy in different ways it's empathy about the culture or the target or i don't like to use the word consumer but the people that um we're trying to build brands to be part of their lives and um and make those brands relevant with those people um but also what does that mean with our relation with our partner relationships and clients um you know they're they are we want it we want them to be clients and we want them to be an extension of our team and we want them we want to be an extension of their team um yeah. so, which is something that we talk about we're not the agency that's going to come in and tell you this is the answer you know like we're the agency that wants to work with the team to help develop because there's a whole wealth of knowledge in some of these brands that have been around for a hundred years that really we have to uh take really uh what's the right uh, we really have to take care of understanding you know um the iconicness but yet the longevity that they've had there's something there that needs to be um harnessed and protected um so that we do justice to what those brands have done for people over the 100 plus years or 50 plus years that they've been around um that empathy piece also trickles into our culture. So when you're working with anyone on our team, there's a really drive to understand like the ways of working and the ways of operating. There's not, you know, everyone says that, like, you know, leave your ego at the door. The truth is it's really, that's really a hard thing to do. Uh, you know, everyone has an ego that we're working towards, but um, working, it's something that we really emphasize and um, not, not afraid to call people out on it. So it's, uh, and you know, people find themselves calling, calling themselves out on, oh, my ego got my way. You know, I think that this is, you know, I think I'm, I'm hoping to have a different discussion about, you know, how things are, are working or looking. So it's the education of just really understanding that, you know, vulnerability, being vulnerable and, you know, humility um, go a long way for creating better creative, but also greater partnerships. So with, you know, our clients, they're, We've had Molson Coors, for example, um, has been a client of ours for 20 plus years. And uh, I think in our world, that's like unbelievable. Like, how does that, like, how is that even possible? Like, we've, there's been four different CMOs um, in that time frame. 
Um, and a lot of our business, a lot of the relationships, I mean, I've, I've had relationships with people that have moved to three or four different companies that kind of just bring us along the journey with them. And what's exciting is like from that, again, that human to human connection. Yeah, we're working on brands, but this is not the madman approach to like trick people into buying something. But like, what can we do together to grow our, you know, how do we, how do we grow and foster relationships but also grow and foster these brands that are part of our culture. Um, they're, you know, so like there's something really uh, satisfying when you're working with an associate brand manager and our team has worked with them for, you know, 10 years, maybe at three different organizations and all of a sudden they're CMO, you know, and mm -hmm. to know that you've been part of helping them drive their career forward, um, is pretty cool. Whether they recognize it or not, doesn't matter. It's kind of one of those things where, you know, you know, I'm a dad, you look at your kids and you don't take credit for their, uh, yeah, you know, their achievements in life. Um, but, um, but yeah, it is, um, there's a lot of joy that comes from, from, you know, that interaction. And I think that that's just felt, you know, like there's, um, we talk about emotion and I think that emotion, that emotion is felt between the relationships that we bring and, you know, to be quite honest, we're not for every organization because not every organization operates in that way. They want to be more of a transactional, mm -hmm. you know, um, partner, but um, inevitably those are not the ones that are fruitful for us. So um, that's where we're at today. I love it. I mean, you know, in my day-to-day, -day, I'm not only a podcaster, but in my world of, of banking, uh, it's interesting because that's the what that's the approach I always want to get to, right? And like you said, not every client uses or chooses to be in that familiarity, comfort, and trust uh, kind of uh, circle. Maybe they just need they they need a product or a service that you need, and they're 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 wanting to get that done and then moving forward, right? But I love that story too, you know. And if you can go a little bit deeper on that, you know, when you when you started, you started with you know peers and colleagues, right? And you get to to start to own the business, but then you said the journey of other people around you, which is part of the E of CEO engagement, where sure. you've created opportunities for other people in other organizations as they moved up to their C-suite opportunities, and they see you. So, what are some what are some things that 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 are more nitty gritty? Like, what did what did was it uh, an experience of you know, taking these people out to lunch, being a part of their life, maybe sending them a note, a personal handwritten note. What did you do that a small to medium sized business owner can do so that when their uh, vendors or their uh, clients have people inside their other organizations leave, that they can be thought of so that they could circle back to do business with them? Yeah, I think one, one really important piece of it is trust, right? So in making sure that they understand that they can trust you and you can trust them. I live with a philosophy and I, we, I, we talked to the team about it is it's easier to, you know, give out trust instead mm -hmm. of waiting for trust to be earned. And um, I think even in our such a fast moving environment that we work in, if you wait for that trust to be earned, you may have lost somebody, you know, you may have, they may have said, I don't know if I can rely on soul site to, to move forward. And then, um, and, or I can, I don't know if I can rely on SoulSite to pull this through for me because my job might be on the line. Um, if this doesn't, if, if I can't get this man, this managed. So we've got the little, little things that we've done is said, you know, like I've, I've told CMOs like you, you know, you, I, I'm, I'm involved in the process as much as you need me to be. There's the bat, you know, you have my cell phone, you have the bat phone. Like I call me anytime, any day, I'm here to help you. I didn't understand and being empathetic, you have a lot of things in your life and in your career and your environment that I don't have to deal with at all and don't mm -hmm. see. So normally when we show up there, it's the, it's, it's the time it, it, it's, they're the meetings that the, our clients are looking forward to because they're getting to work with a creative agency, but there's all the other end of there's, there's all the other things that they're dealing with from the financial side of things and the, and the performance side of the things that I try to help them understand and lean into I care about your business. I care about, you know, understanding what you need for your business. And one thing that we, our, our team does too, is like constantly leaning in to understand, you know, asking those why questions. So like not just taking a brief and working on what we need to do with the brand, but like thinking about 
you know, what, how does this brand not, how is, it, how is this brand going to grow just not on its own organically, but how is it going to, what is it, where does it fit in the ecosystem of the entire corporation mm -hmm. or the business that it's work that you're working with and how, and how does that affect it? What does that, what does that translate to then when you're at what, what who are your clients who are your consumers um uh, you know whether it's the sales team whether it's the retailer you know it could be a distributor you know like what what do you need from us to be armed and be prepared to be able to to go out there and win you know it's like that win-win scenario mindset kind of trickles into what we're doing trickles into how we've used little little just little like human yeah like human things and you know i I, I, I like to know about people's families. You know, some people are more private than others, um, both, both internally and externally. You know, I think it's, uh, it's just, there are much, we have much more in common than we have different from anyone in the, any what human being, other human being in the world. And I think when you can make some of those connections and I have a weird ability to remember like, you know, personal things or things about people's lives um, more so than sometimes the projects we're working on. So um, oh, I've, there's oftentimes clients will say to me, how the hell did you remember that? You know, I had, you know, a, a three-year-old. How how did you remember that I took a vacation two years ago to Scotland? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I just remember, I just happened to remember those things. <laughs> um, awesome. So it's, it's just, a, it's just the human piece of it, I think for me too. And it's not, um, um, it, it, it really just comes out of like, really just enjoying, like, I think you said it, like, I, I enjoy talking and learning from other people. And, and I love hearing stories, you know, it, it's what we do is like what we're doing in a, with a branding agency, we're telling stories for a brand too. So yeah, as human beings, we, we, that's our best mode of communication is stories, right? And those who, those who tell a story you know, can share or quote unquote sell better than others because they're not just throwing facts, right? And, and something as a human being, right? We're catching, uh, I have a great mentor of mine who says things are caught, not taught, right? And great. when you catch it in a story, you're like, you feel emotional, you feel connected, right? And that's part of what you do on a daily basis in your team, right? So, uh, you know, it, it, it made me think of uh, what's called benchmarking, right? A lot of times when I work with clients, say, you, you try to go into an industry, do some benchmarking so that they can feel like, hey, you know a little bit about kind of their competition, all, types, all those types of things. So as you've grown your clientele, uh, what are some KPIs that you use that that either benchmark or do you guys do some initial? Give us a little bit of like, I guess, the client journey when you think about, and I know you've gone to Fortune 100 to smaller, so you have an experience of multiple. I, does it change when it's bigger companies? Does it stay the same, or do you guys stay tried and true in your system in your process? Uh, I think it. I would say it changes in the way that we're flexible, but I think at the at the core of the methodology or mindset is always the same. So, I think whether it's a smaller startup company or you know a company that's been around for two hundred years or a hundred years, it's not. Um, at the core of what we're working on is again, I'm going back to the human experience and like the uh, working um, with those human relationships and, uh, and being on the creative side of that, being able to see something and um, help people catch things that they wouldn't normally um, be, be looking for. Uh, I think when you talk about KPIs um, it's because part of the, part of our brand and what we do is we think of the brand as being at the center of all of execution. So when you talk about creative execution, you know, we might work on, you might work on packaging, you might be working on what that brand positioning is and how does that brand get started? How does it, what is the pipeline look like? Where does the, and then all, what are all the creative touch points that make sense for this brand to express itself? And mm -hmm. um, that model works and can be flexible depending on the needs and sort of the budget or the infrastructure of the clients that we're working with um, or where or where and how certain things make sense. I think we're less about stunt marketing to create um, awareness or like quick um, uh, 
quick connections, but more long. I often say like branding is a marathon. You know, it's not a sprint. Like you have to really think about what's like where things are going to be going five to ten years from now, um, and what and also what's ha currently happening in our environment. So it's not. Um, sometimes you know you see it, we see stunt marketing every day. You know, in mm -hmm. terms of like in and wonder if this is this real or is this not real or is this intentional or is this not intentional? And I think. Um, that that's not the business that we're in i think again i think it and that correlates back to like when you're in a relationship you're really working on a relationship you're not working on just um dating someone to like take to the prom you know like it's it's <laughs> it's about you know really really focusing on on building relationships and like i said it's not for everybody some people like that um I would think that most people would like to be able that they can feel trust going to a trusted partner um, over and over again to help them. And that partner is continuing to evolve and change and grow and learn so that it doesn't become, you said the word like a uh, um, comfortable, you know, like that we're always continuing to push, push the boundaries. I think the, um, so the KPIs that we use too is like, so client retention is like a big one that we look at for ours because it's hard to measure like the brand touches advertising or it touches digital or it touches all these different places so it's hard to understand like where when you see a brand grow all of that works together so the part that we play is mixed in with other agencies that are also working on different parts and pieces of the brand so we look at so we do look at like how how has the has the has the brand gained more share that's a good way to think about out about it because it, you can look at um growth in the growth in the category or so, something brought new to the category and like where and how is that moving um aware like is there more awareness to like where things were before so from a business side and a brand side looking at it that way um and then i think the other kpis kind of translate to just again going back to that piece of the relationship of how we build is how what's our what are what's our staff tenure like you know like what is when we do a cultural survey, what is important to them and understanding on how we need to shift or evolve our way of communicating and thinking. Um, it's in constant, it's in, it's always in a constant state of change, you know, like there's, um, it's never, and it, you know, for some people that's might be, that could be frustrating, right? But um, you have to really kind of accept the fact that change is constant. And um, so, when you get when we look at the retention as a KPI, it's really it really kind of shows up in in our performance. So like the longer that we have people that are embedded into like our belief system, and I don't want to make it sound like we're a cult by any means, but like <laughs> the more the more that you're because really anyone that we anyone that joins our team or any client that we engage with changes the dynamic of the 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 kind of the the relationship or the unit. Um, and hopefully they're, as you said before, entrepreneurs that are, they're really thinking about like, how do I make, how do I help establish change and how do I build and how do I, what's good for me is good for the whole. So um, yeah, KPIs, KPIs are really difficult, like for us to, to measure from a, a brand growth um, position. I mean, we can do a lot internally and you know, they're all the basic, you know, internally, we can always look at our growth and see how we're performing month by month or, or week by week, but it's not, um, but it's, it gets a little dicey when you think about a brand and all how it has to exist and so many different expressions and experiences for, for a culture. No, I love, uh, you said an incredible word there, right? The expressions of that company, right? And you talked about packaging, you talked about the outward awareness, you know, it could be recreating the logo, right? Um, I had a recent dental practice that we did some uh, financing for, and, and it was interesting. <clears throat> I just went to their location and it's built out now. Well, the previous one that was maybe two blocks away <clears throat> was completely different. He changed the colors, hmm. he got some guidance. Uh, it feels interestingly comfortable to go to his practice because of just even the lettering and the different waves that are in the lettering. Mm -hmm. so it's really neat. Uh, so you, you work in such a dynamic environment, you know, now, you know, 
we, we went down the road of KPI and kind of seen where the client side of things, but a lot of, you know, clients and a lot of people that I talk to that are CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, you know, are struggling with, with staffing, right. And, mm -hmm. and really good people that they retain. And you've mentioned, you've dropped it a couple of times. I've heard you, I'm John the bomb, but you've dropped some bombs of <laughs> how you kept people 10, 15, 20 years. So I'd love to just go down that path. You know, what are you doing compared to maybe some of the industries out there that are seeing that kind of flight, you know, uh, scenario where they're not sticking around or you're not attracting. It sounds like you're attracting, you're keeping, and you're engaging your your employees within. So tell us a little bit about kind of how you put that together. Well, a lot of it's learned by, a lot of it's been learned by making mistakes, but there are, you know, I think giving people the opportunity to, um, be accountable for for things and like really really letting them be accountable and and stepping aside and saying it's okay to make a mistake you know like it's okay don't you know like it's okay to make a mistake and you know you're not going to be persecuted for it depending mean, obviously if it's something like morally bad morally bad or there that's a different sort but i'm just talking about mistakes in how think something might be have been managed or so, some in ways that things that might have been produced, um, but giving people the ability to say like, Hey, like we need you to like be accountable for what's going on, for what, for, for what you're doing. Um, you're, and actually too, like the, the, the gratitude piece of like continuing to let people know that you're grateful and you recognize what they're mm -hmm. doing for, for the company. I mean, I think a lot of times for me, you know, I, I could be in work mood and have my blinders on a lot of the time and forget to s take a second to say thank you to someone who, you know, s stayed up half the night getting a presentation ready, you know, that I wasn't aware of until like two days later. So um, it's like ha I have to be conscious of consciously reaching out and understanding um what's what people are doing and who's contributing who's not contributing there's a um we we implemented what's called the star award um that we we highlight two stars every month and um they're nominated by peers so they're not nominated from the executive team it's coming from their peers and we talk about how the what they've done reflect back to our core values and what that and then what how those core values impact what they've done with the output of the business or what they've done with the service of the business. And, um, and then at the end of the year, we choose three outstanding, you know, from that group of stars that 24 stars through the year, who are the three people who really have come out and, and shine. And it's amazing to me when you give those awards to those people, they're the people that are feel the most surprised that they're getting the award, right? Like they're, they're, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even really realize that people are recognizing what I'm doing. So um, I think it gives people that notion of like, you know, gratitude is the attitude that we need to have in order to like keep each other lifted up, especially in the creative. I mean, like it's a, it, it can be, a, I, I've mentioned this to many people before, but our designers, our strategists, our account people, our accounting, they put a piece of their, themselves into that work that, um, is uh it's personal you know like it's um it doesn't may not seem like because it's business but it's still personal and it's personal to them they're providing for their livelihoods and they're you know they're thinking about what um they want to feel like they're they're that, that they're meaningful to the organization and that they're making a difference i think that that's something that i learned from from my experience and the privilege that i had of being part of this organization for so long and when i was young is you know, working for someone that's saying to me constantly, like, you're making a difference in this business and you're growing the business. And I can't tell you how meaningful that is to me as, you know, not only a business owner, but as a person, you know, like, mm -hmm. so um, again, it might sound soft, but those like soft skills, um, if they're not nurtured, um, we just become transactional again. And then there's not, it doesn't matter. Like I, we could be McDonald's or Burger King, it, you know, like it's not, you know, we have to set ourselves up as, um, I'm not saying those organizations are bad. I'm talking about in terms of like, uh, and the analogy is not that they're bad um, transactional, but I'm talking about like, we're not a drive-through, you know, it's like, we're not yeah. here to just like take an order and, 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 and run. So 
Um, but yeah, so it's, it, it, it is, um, it is that, that, that human factor that, that, that becomes really important to, to like nurture. I love it. I, I think, you know, you, you said it so well when you're putting in the time and, and go for CEO community, you know, if you picked up on the nugget of the two star award, you know, there's 60 something employees, right? Um, you know, two people are winning it. It also creates some competition, right? I mean, in January, you're going to have two stars in 2024, but maybe the other 60 something people didn't get it. And they're like, oh, I want to get that star award. Or maybe last year they, they didn't make it to the top three MVPs, but they want to pursue that. And that's, you know, as much as, you know, our society sometimes has drawn back from that competition, it also seems to be a, a great ingredient that you leave in your, in your culture to allow people to, to strive to get there, right? And where I'm at on my day to day, we call it the heart of the bank that I'm at. And, uh, and it's, it's multiple winners. And we've got hundreds of thousands of employees, but it's interesting because when that, when that list comes out, man, we're all look in my mind, because it's, it's done by a peer actually. Uh, that you nominate someone. Um, and yeah. one, one of the people on my team that she's in Minnesota, I, I got to learn about her story. She told me she's handicapped and she's a, and a, and, um, it's called relationships uh, service specialist. And, uh, but she, when she told me her story, I was so touched by it. It made me think of this uh, recognition tool that we have. And now we put her on that and she had never had it before from some of the colleagues that she's worked with before. Um, so it was really cool just to kind of see that sense. And I actually met this week uh, with another gentleman that it, it, she kind of shares teams. Uh, so she's on this gentleman's team, this other uh, relationship manager. And we both talked about her in such a glowing way. And he recognized that I recognized her. So now what hmm. does that create? Culture of recognition, right? So go for CEO community. What a cool, powerful story. Uh, the two star method uh, that yeah. Jim has implemented. Our two star award. I, I can't take credit for coming up with it. I would say like our executive team has a lot of oh, awesome. great okay. ideas, awesome. but, um, but it's, uh, um, but yeah, I, I think it comes to that, but the star award does come from, I had part, I had great partners coming up through the business too, where that were also designers and comp healthy competition is not bad. Like I think, I wanted to do, I wanted to be doing just the, the same great amount of work that they were doing. Right. Yeah. So like, I, like, it's not out of comparison, but I'm like, I don't want to let you down. Like I want to, you know, like I want to be able to like contribute just as much as, a, as I possibly can, you know? And I think that's just living by example in, um, in some cases. And so, and I, a little bit of backstory about me is I'm a twin. So like oh. when you, so growing up, there's healthy competition happening every moment of your life. So <laughs> you grow up just up thinking like, I'm always, I'm going to be there. And I, someone else is doing the same exact things from as me, my brother, it's, it's, it's my, my brother, Joe is his name. So like, it's a uh, Joe and Jim, but there are, um, but I, I need to be there for my, you know, I need, I want to be good, as good as my brother at something else. But the truth comes out is like, he's going to excel at some things that I'm not going to excel at. Uh, you know, we're very two very different people, but for a long period of a, of your lifetime, you're constantly thinking about ways to 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 compete. Um, um, and not and again, not in a way that you're out to get somebody else, and um, you can't be a sore loser about it. I think that you know those life lessons came really young for me. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's cool and neat to hear that dynamic that you had growing up as well. You know, as we uh, wind down the interview here, uh, there's three areas, right, of the Go for CEO community that we always end up with, which is customer experience is the C of the CEO, E is engagement, and O is for operational excellence. But I did want to touch on one thing, just because selfishly, uh, I'm always interested in this, and you share to the capacity that you can or, or are willing to share, but we're always interested in, you know, someone that uh, was inside of a company becomes an owner of a company, especially with a man, with a with a group team effort. And now you you switch a little bit, right? You you brought your non-active uh, equity partners, and then but you brought in a PE company, right? So if you could share just a little bit of that dynamic, and then we'll jump into the CEO part of our ending of the interview. Yeah. So great. Um, the dynamic of the experience with the private equity company, I think, you know, I don't. I, I, I don't know if, if I necessarily believe in luck, but I, but are fortunate to have found someone who uh, who are, was also more of a startup um, family mentality of a private equity company, and 
um, has a lot of care and understanding about growth. And these these gentlemen have worked together at other locations, at other businesses for multiple years. So again, there's a lot of retention and their relationships with each other and understanding where their strengths are. But being able to, for me, working with them, um, I, I would say as I, we started to work with them, it was, I felt a little bit inept in my abilities to speak their same language and understand what their needs were. And like when they're looking, when we're creating budgets and the pushes that they had, um, there's a little bit of uh, self-confidence that was like, oh, you know, how do I, how, how do we, how do we really do this? How do we dance? How do we make sure that we're both understanding each other? How do I make sure that uh, the the pressures that they're putting on us isn't mm-hmm. affecting, you know, the, uh, the, the great work that we do. Um, and they actually are really great as, as, when I, when I can, when I was able to come to them and say, Hey, there's a, I'm going to ask a lot of dumb questions, you know, so just be prepared, be prepared that I'm not, I'm going to come to you as I am. Mm-hmm. When you see me, the, who I am today and how we're talking is how I am in life. Like I'm not smart enough to be two, two different types of people and I'm not going to sell you something or, try to persuade you into believing something that might not, we might not be able to, to attain. So I think I don't have, a, I only have experience with this one private equity company, but working with colleagues talking about how they have to sell so hard to their private equity companies to help to continue to have them to believe in them that they're going to do something. I want them. I mean, they've really come to us and said, we're here to support. So like, if you have a problem, come call us up right away. Like I'd rather find out sooner than later than wait until you know we're at the end of the second quarter and we got a major problem we have to deal with we have time to we have time to work and work with someone that's objective to come and help us think about things in different ways you know to salvage maybe an an issue or a concern that might happen so working with the private equity company has allowed and has, has also allowed me to see the greater opportunities that there are for us beyond the world that I know and I grew up in. So it's, wow, like there's a whole nother, like there's a whole nother universe and a whole, like it's like swimming a, a goldfish sitting in a little, we were like a goldfish in a in a little bowl that got dropped into this pond. <laughs> and, and now like, wait, that pond flows into the this ocean of like opportunities that, you know, it is what we make of them, right? Like it is what, it is what we, t- where we take it, so. Um, for me that, you know, it's been a great experience. I, I know that for some people it's, you just got to find, I think the right partner um, yeah. for moving forward. And, and, you know, I hope that these people are, um, be, will be part, you know, whether we move on from them or they, you know, or, or we move on with, to a, to a different um, uh, equity partner that I hope that these, the, the, the guys that we're working with, you know, I still maintain contact with and and maintain some sort of working or professional relationship with and and personal rela- relationship with them. So, um, no, and we appreciate uh, you know the community really kind of learns from these experiences that you have, right? So, um, you know, uh, I was just at a uh, seminar on Thursday that it's called Midwest Business Brokers uh, International and MBBI, and the gentleman is a private equity out of uh, um, Wisconsin, and he was talking about you know, they look for certain types of companies that match their internal culture, right? And Mm -hmm. it seems like, you know, from a strategic um, that could be in the industry to an outside, to a PE, right? There's different ways to acquire and and meld, but sometimes it works, sometimes it does. So it's really cool to hear that you've been able to spread your wings now, even with some of the the flight that they can give you, uh, as you said, uh, swimming in from the bowl to the river to the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, so if you, that's person. the way I think about it. I mean, some people can see the PE, eight for, you know, the PE company as like big brother, always kind of yeah. like looking after you or, um, but it's, you know, it's not, it, if you think about it that way, you're kind of hindering yeah. and working in this environment where you're constantly in panic or scared about what's going to happen mm-hmm. the next week. I think you have to live your life. Um, and it's hard because there's a lot of negativity in the world, but yeah. Think about things like what a, 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 a positive mindset, um, and when things if things do happen 
that are unfortunate just have you know faith the hope is not a strategy but like have hope that yeah you know things ultimately always get better it might not take it might not get better as quickly as we want it to but it's going to get better well i mean you, you know even talking about you took some chips off the table right which is a strategic move yeah. you know i was just with a client earlier uh, last week and they're thinking three to five years from now which is kind of what you should be thinking when you're thinking mm -hmm. of an exit uh, but you were strategic. You took some chips off the table. You still have a great partnership. You have a great you know, resource in the P. And now who knows where it's going to go, but you have some strategy. You have some some uh, wind beneath your wings, they say, right? So awesome stuff. So, hey, so CEO is customer experience, engagement, and operational excellence. So why don't we start just kind of a high level to, you know, 30 seconds to a minute of what you feel like SoulSight brings to the table. When you think about customer experience, What's kind of your most value add uh, proposition? I think approach. I think approachability is our customer experience. Like approachability and um, and care. I would say like just from the top from you know the top answer. You know we're we're here. Here and ready. Care, to go. care caregiver kind of comes up, comes to mind. Okay, I love it. I love it. So, and then engagement, you know, I used to call it employee engagement, but I wanted to make it broader, you know, because you deal with vendors, you deal with, you know, resources outside, you deal, you have to deal with engaging with the PE company now as another par partner on the equity, you have the sweet suite, C suite, um, you have your employees, you have your remote people. So engagement to you as a CEO, what does that mean high level? So, you know, like we talk a lot, in marketing, we talk a lot about access, accesses and we're like where things fit on the access. Um, I think for for me, when I think about engagement, there's two there's two words that come to mind, which are um, what's your what's the perception, and then what's your expectation. So, on those, uh, you know, thinking about in that um, uh, sorry in the, in our culture, culture, or, or, or in the studio, in, in our business environment, it's what's the expecta expectation that I have? What's the expectation that they have? Let's come together to understand that on um, this access of understanding, and then understand when you come into the room, or you come into the meeting, or you come into the, the process, what's the perception, you know, what, what are, what the perception that you might think you're, um, bringing is not what's really being perceived so it's constantly checking that those those checks and balances um on the access of ex, of accountability and perception and i think when you can start but that takes a lot of trust with mm -hmm. another person to like be able to like understand that like where no one is a bad player or in this that there's always good intent um and if there's always good intent there's always a way to um to make the to make the um, those experiences where you said to get that engagement um, mm -hmm. positive or fruitful or um, encouraging um, to move things forward. It works. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, you know, O is operational excellence, and I'm I'm only going to guess, but uh, maybe you can go a little bit deeper on it. So, when the P company came in, did they uh, really kind of share with you maybe some processes, some operational things that they have been doing with some of the portfolio companies that they have that, but also engage with you, you know, engagement again. So looking at where you had already established certain processes and, and operations and softwares and things. So from an operational excellence side, what do you think SoulSight has done over the last few years that really kind of streamlines things or operationally you've implemented a software or some sort of dynamic um, Monday strategy, you know, th those types of things. So I think that um, one thing that we, things that we always did was have, we used to have a weekly, you know, just uh, agency meeting, um, mm -hmm. which turned into, you know, like what's in the news. And I think um, having the private equity company come in and like kind of look and see what we're doing those we need those needed to be have a little bit more meat and transparency was um we needed to become more transparent you know i think being transparent so people understand why we're talking about the decisions we're making or why we're going in a different way um mm. that has really helped empower like we like we talked about empowering people to feel like they're it's their business too by being transparent about what's going on with the budget where we're tracking where we're going is a tool that i think has really helped 
you know, people that you wouldn't think would care really care about what's happening at a large from a larger perspective. I think mm-hmm. also um, one thing that the a, a tool that we've initiated in the last couple of years is building a really strong pipeline um, when you're to, when we're talking about business development. And I think we are lot we were lucky enough to rely on a lot of organic um, relationships and uh, referrals, but really building a pipeline and documenting something. I always said before the the the, the tool that I use like write something down and it will happen. So. Mm-hmm you know, recording and writing something down so that it, you, if, if you forget it's written, you, you, you've written it. And, and it's, it's also like a memory thing too, right? Like I am the type of person, like if I want to really remember something, I have to write it or I have to take notes on it to get there. Um, that's been really successful in, in how we move forward. And the last thing we talked about earlier was, you know, from a qualitative perspective, I think with the quality perspective that we bring from, culture and human science and relationships and the psychology of all of that to business um, is not really how a PE always looks at things, right? They're looking at it from more of a data-centric point of view. So I think that we've been able to bring some of that in um, knowledge to the P- with the PE company and with our team, but then the whole, the other side of the brain, so the left and right side working together um, to understand like from a financial standpoint, um, responsibility um, piece and uh, and understanding data that the qual and quant of the data coming together um, really does enrich and make us um, take a lot of risk out of the business and allow us to like kind of see things a little bit more forward for for planning purposes and um, I mean that just benefits everyone right like the the awareness and um, the understanding so. Um, and it's always a work in progress, right? It's like, how much do we share? What do we sh- like I- internally? Like, how much do we share? What do we share? What is going to, we're not sharing this to burden anyone with things, but just to understand for, for their own growth. And also for, like, again, another win-win scenario, like what you know, and what we know, kind of, um, if you know where we're going and what we, what we want and what, what our goals are. Um, it's easier than working in a, in a vacuum um, from, from project to project. And and like I said, that, that the the data piece of like having a CFO come to us and um, uh, he comes from WPP, his name's Gavin, Gavin Cubes. And uh, he, um, Gavin has, he actually lives out in your neck of the woods. Um, Gavin has that experience in working with a number of different creative agencies under WPP. And then, that knowledge that he has is just so unique because CFO to CFO, depending on ind- the industry that you're in is very different. And he kind of takes that, that risk, um, financial risk um, perspective into like even helping our in and managing a lot of our operations stuff too. So um, that's been exciting. So like it, we still are the other members of our, our executive team, you know, Laura, Justin, uh, Whitney, um, Melissa, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but they are all like, I, I could not do what we could not do what we do without their, their drive and their passion for what we're, what we're doing and their, and their real connection to like the, like the, the people. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm, I'm admiring the, the subtle way, the way that you speak of kind of the intentionality of how you drop, uh, the, the, what you built, right? Uh, it, it feels through your speaking, and I hope that Gopher Shield community, you're, you're understanding that every, there's different dynamics, different types of people, different ways that they express. I do, I use my hands a lot, um, but it's really interesting to see kind of where, where someone who's go, grown inside of a company now then also the way you just expressed your fellow colleagues at the executive suite um, is really interesting. And, and I'm, I'm sure we could talk another hour just even on that great team that you put together. Um, I, I always, I always feel a little, uh, I wouldn't say bad, but I'm like, it's not all about Jim. Like it's not no, for sure. Jim Petrozinski, like we're soul site for a reason. Like this is, you know, we're not the, the, the company's not named and for multiple reasons, it's not named after me, but like, it really is a, we, this is the, we is really important. Um, and it's, it comes out in conversations. Like I will, someone will send me an email and if there's a lot of eyes written in something, I will respond back to them. And I say, can you just take another look and 
um, and think about the we versus me mentality yeah. and and how you, and how you read that how you read through that and then they could be it could be something as simple as a a piece of communication that's going to a particular employee about a project you know so I think um it, it's something that it, I don't I mean I see that I'm saying I but I see a lot of that in in our world where um the collective it has to be more important than what we each individually need and sometimes we have to sacrifice things you know I, it makes me think uh i heard on a podcast once that the gentleman who'd become successful himself he had a meeting with tony matola from sony and he, he said tony man you know ultimately you built this empire right i mean you were the one that really kind of catapulted sony to the next level and Tony said, look, I just spent the greatest amount of dollars on the people that I brought in at the executive level. Like he wasn't cheap about it. He said, and this gentleman that I follow, I'll, tell, I'll share with you offline. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting. That's kind of what he's trying to do is he's built a media company now where he's looking for those C-suite executive level, mm -hmm. but he's going to overspend with the right person, right? Uh, and that's kind of what Tony had taught him. He, he had a relationship with Tony Matola. So no, awesome stuff, Jim. Thank you so much for joining the Go for CEO community. Uh, looking forward to posting this on all our social media outlets and having you share and, uh, you know, we'll be clipping it. We've got a new little AI tool that's uh, able to clip these things and do shorts. So you'll be scattered around the, the internet. So super excited to have SoulSight. Now, how can people reach you? I know that you have a kind of an open door, open mobile. You share the, the communication tools that you'd like. And hopefully if somebody sees this and they want to engage with SoulSight, we'd love to be able to have them reach you or reach your company directly. Yeah, the easiest way to reach us is uh, our website, soulsite.com. There's a little contact us button. I receive those info emails and they go to our executive team. So if you're interested in um, reaching out, please, and if, or if you, or you have a question, you know, it doesn't have to be for a project or a potential assignment. Happy to have a conversation um, and network with anyone who, who need, who, you know, who's interested. Awesome, awesome stuff. So, uh, hey, Go for CEO community, if you're new to the channel and you just enjoyed this message, right, this interview, this powerful story about someone that's, you know, was inside of a company working, having creativity, having flexibility, becoming an entrepreneur, and now is the full-fledged, right, entrepreneur, along with now the dynamics of PE companies, uh, smaller equity partners, all that type of stuff, and an incredible executive team. You know, take a smash the like button for me, you know, become a subscriber. We're trying to grow this channel and be able to share really cool uh, stories of local CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs, right? Uh, that may not be the biggest names in the marketplace, but it's real people impacting, you know, the community. I know he didn't share this, but he's been in his community with his family for over 20 something years, upper in the upper north side of Illinois. And uh, what an impact Jim has made in his community. So thanks, Jim, so much for being a part of the GoPro CEO uh, conversation here. Thanks, John.